Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. I am in the process of moving trees from my plant room out here into the greenhouse, getting all my tropical trees in the sunshine. I brought my aloe out and it needs a little bit of cleanup. It survived the winter really nicely. The last time I worked on the tree, it was getting very tall, so I just cut off some of the stems. And some of them responded very well and some didn't. So let's go in and have a look at it now. Here is a look at the aloe. So there's two things happening on it. Uh, it's getting aerial roots from the humidity in the plant room. And some of the aerial roots have gotten quite woody and are viable. They're good roots. There's a few aerial roots. Um, this one, it just withered away. It uh, kind of dried up. And there's a few like that. They, uh, If they don't reach the soil, here's another big one here that just kind of dried up. Yeah, if they don't reach the soil and root, they tend to just kind of dry up and turn kind of papery. There's another dried up one there. So that's one thing that's happening. It's getting lots of aerial roots. You can see a new one here. It's kind of a yellow color. And then on those trunks I cut back, like there's one here I cut back and it sprouted a branch down lower on that trunk line. There's another one here I cut back and it has some branching. Uh, there's one on the interior here I cut back and I don't see any branching on that one. And I think there's another one here. I cut it back and it looks like it's not going to branch, it's just going to die off. And, you know, there's the debate, you know, is this a bonsai? Because you can't really prune them like a tree. If you, you know, if they're getting too tall and you prune them, unless you have some pups down lower, generally that trunk line just dies back. So you're kind of maybe always replacing the trunk lines on this aloe bonsai. And, you know, but some were successful. You know, I cut cut the uh, trunk lines back hard and they got branches on them. So they do back bud. It's just not very reliable. So maybe that's the strategy I use is, you know, as the trunks get taller and taller, I cut them back. Those that get branches down low and survive, I maintain. And the ones that die out, I just prune them out of the planting. And, you know, you're always replacing the trunks in this kind of clump style. Here is a look at the trunk line up close. You can see it's starting to get very interesting looking. It's getting woody. It's got a big kind of clump style structure to it, aerial roots. Yeah, so it's, you know, coming along. I don't know if, uh, you know, it'll ever become a bonsai or if it'll just be an interesting plant. But I'll call it a bonsai because I'm trying to do bonsai techniques on it and it's semi-successful. I'm going to do some cleanup work on my aloe bonsai, removing the dead leaves removing the dead trunks and just kind of cleaning it up, getting it ready for the summer. I'll start the work by removing some of these dead leaves. You can either just kind of pull them out if they do, or you can just prune them off. And I'm just going to prune it off because it's kind of hard to get in there to pull them. There's a yellow leaf here I can prune away. There's a few weeds, not too many. I can pull those out too. So I kept this aloe in the plant room warm over the winter and my other aloe I kept in the basement cool. And the ones that are kept cool just stay dormant and they survive quite nicely at 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And the ones that stay warm they tend to grow a little more, but I don't think it makes much difference if you keep them cool over the winter or keep them warm. They, they both survive well until summer comes. 
So I think next year, to make space in the plant room, I'll keep this cool over the winter. I might as well keep the trees that survive the cool weather or the cool temperatures cool for the winter so it frees up more space in the plant room for the tropicals. And once this aloe gets out into the sun, it should grow with a lot of vigor this year. Here's another aerial root that's dried up. I think this one's pretty well dried up too. Bottom of it is, anyway. Yeah, they're fairly hard to strip off these old leaves. They seem attached to the stems quite well. So it's way easier to cut them away. So that's got all the dead leaves cleaned up. So now I've got to look at my trunk lines and see what's alive and what's dead. It's hard to tell on that one. It's got aerial roots. I don't think it's alive. I could cut back part of it and see. Well, there is some fleshy stuff there, so it might still be alive. Yeah, not too many of the trunk lines died off. It was fairly successful that last pruning. This one, I think that's still alive too. Maybe, you know, some of these trunks I prune back, once the aloe gets out into the sunlight, they'll generate branches off them. So I'm not going to prune it away yet. Now, I am going to get rid of some of these leaves hanging down here. So, so it exposes the trunks a little more. So I'll just prune off some of this older growth off of the aloe. That'll make it a little easier to water. And it'll display the trunk a little more too. Making sure the ones I prune away have strong shoots above. And any leaves going to the inside I remove too. The ones that are pointing back towards the inside of the, of the aloe plant. Well, it's kind of got the base of the plant all cleaned up. Yeah, so I think, you know, it's in good shape. I'll give it a good water. There's an old leaf I can prune away. Yeah, I'll give it a good watering. And it's out in the sunshine now. It should do quite well over the summer. You can see all the debris I've pruned off the tree. Quite a bit cleaning it all up and I'll give it a good thorough watering. Okay, so that is all ready to grow for summer. It's looking very, very nice. I'll spin the aloe around so you can see it from all directions. So I think somewhere here is about the front, maybe here. So coming around to the right hand side, to the back left hand side and back to the front even if you don't consider an aloe a bonsai i think you have to admit it's a pretty cool looking tree so i'll get another tree from the plant room now and begin working on that the next tree i have out in the sunshine is my crown of thorns it overwintered quite well it uh, flowered in midwinter so today I'm just going to do some cleanup on it. There's a lot of kind of dead leaves hanging down. Some spent flower buds I can pick off. So just a general cleanup on it. Other than that, it's looking quite good. Here is a look at it. I'll spin it around. So there's the front, the right side, the back, the left side, and back to the front. So I'll just come in here with the tweezers and pick out any dead leaves and flowers that are hanging about. 
So this crown of thorns um, reacts really well to pruning. The leaves stay quite small. It branches nicely. And you know, for a succulent, it does really well as a bonsai. My other crown of thorns, which I'll get out after this, it has the larger leaves on it and it doesn't react quite as well to pruning as this one. And I'll show you what is happening with that one. Just picking out any spent flowers and leaves just to get more light in here. Air circulation. And this should really take off once it gets out here in the sun. And this one's getting quite old now. I've had it for many, many years. Developed from a small little plant from a nursery. And I've never noticed any, you know, insects on it or any dieback or anything. It's done really, really well. And it looks quite spectacular this in summer when it's in flower. It's just covered with pink flowers all over the top of it. I don't think I've had it in a show, but maybe someday to add some color to a show. Hopefully someday there's a show when it's in flower and I can display it. And it doesn't have a really thick trunk on it or anything, but you know, it's getting there. It's making progress every year. There's a close-up of the flowers that it gets. And it the, just covers the whole crown of the tree. Yeah, they're quite nice. These are a little faded, but it gives you an idea of what they look like. Here is a look at my other crown of thorns. So it was just a single trunk and I did the first prune. I just cut the top off and slowly the leaves that were on it kind of died back and I thought, oh, maybe this species, which you know has the big large leaves, doesn't respond well to pruning. But it, the trunk line survived over the winter. This leaf stayed on it and I see there's some buds kind of coming out on the trunk. But it did uh, kind of sucker up from the root system. So I don't know if a clump style is in the future for this, but it looks like it did take the pruning, just not as well as my other one. The next tree I'm bringing out is my acacia tree. This one I kept warm in the plant room over the winter and it grew quite well. My other acacias I kept in the basement cool at 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit and they lost their leaves and went dormant for the winter and now they're beginning to re-emerge, wake up and grow new leaves. So I'll show you both of those. Here is a look at my acacia. So this one was grown from a seed. I was at the botanical gardens and the one acacia there had all these seed pods on it. And I didn't want to take a seed pod off the tree because I don't think that's allowed. But there were seed pods on the pathway. So I picked one up, planted it, and this is the tree today. So it grew really well over the winter, keeping it warm. And it has a cool mushroom growing on it. I'll show you that. Here's a close-up look at that fungi growing really well. I don't know how it'll do out here in the sunshine. It'll probably wither away. They don't last long anyway, these little mushrooms. I am going to prune this acacia back before it goes out for the summer. So I'll take this branch here and I'll prune to a leaf that's facing outwards. Bring the tip off here. And then I want to prune this tall leader back. I, Eventually want to train this in the flat top acacia style or the Pyrneef style. So I'm looking, I pruned it here once already and it's grown a new leader. So I'm always looking for leaves that are fanning outwards. I've got a couple down low here, just at that pruning point. And then the next outward facing one is kind of way up here. So I'll at least take the top off. Here I go. 
being careful of the thorns. And then I'll see what develops. Maybe some new branches will come in lower and I can prune it back to create more of a flat top tree. So that's a look at my acacia. I believe this is a monkey thorn or it could be a sweet thorn. I don't know the exact scientific name, but yeah, I've got several acacia varieties. This is the kind with the very small, delicate leaves. They're very, very tiny. Beautiful tree for bonsai. Here are my other acacias that I kept cool over the winter and they're just starting to bud out now and grow with a ton of vigor. So it looks like I hope all of them have survived. I don't have any green leaves on this one yet and maybe not on this one either, but there is buds here. This one looks like it has buds also. So I'm hoping they're just a little slow. There's one back here that's just starting to leaf out now. Another one back here that's got buds just coming out on it. So it's a little early to tell how these ones did, but I think by the looks of all the others, I think they've survived. And I, I see some buds on here that look good. So eventually, you know, I'll be planting this uh, to replace my elephant penjing. I hope to grow these also in that acacia flat top style. And there's a mixture of, um, what are they called? The sweet thorn, which is the darker trunk ones and fever trees, which are the lighter colored ones. So there's a mixture of two acacias in here. And I know they're not called acacias anymore there. But yeah, so that's the forest. Everything's looking good. They're going to grow with a ton of vigor this summer. And all these trees were grown from seeds. So they're getting quite old now and slowly thickening up and getting character from the clip and grow. They're not just straight trunks. They've got some movement to them and they're starting to get branching. So it's kind of exciting. Uh, it's uh, one of my favorite species of tree. I just love the natural form they get in nature and I hope to replicate that. I've got lots of acacia trees on the go. I'll go into the plant room now and get out another tree. Well, it seems we have a real African theme going today. So I brought out my baobab trees. I've got three that I grew from seed and they're just starting to leaf out. So you can see on this tree there's some good leaves coming at the growing tips, some back budding. Yeah, very exciting. My largest one here is also leafing out there's green at all the growing tips. So it's very exciting. So I'll, I'll talk about the baobabs, uh, how the development's been going so far. My baobab trees were grown from seed in July of 2020. So they'll be going into their fourth growing season. And I never grew baobab trees before because I thought it would be impossible in Canada that we just don't have the environment to grow them. But then I saw online someone in Michigan, in the United States, a northern kind of state, growing baobab trees. And I thought, well, if they can do it, I'll give it a try also. And so far, they're doing really, really well. So I, I keep these trees dry over the winter. I don't water them at all. And this year, for the first time, when I was putting them in the plant room for the winter, they had all their leaves on them. And normally, the cool weather in fall, they drop all their leaves and go dormant. But this year, they were in full leaf. So I just put them in the plant room in the corner and I stopped watering them. And slowly, the leaves went from green, they dried up, and then they eventually fell off. And I left them all winter without any water, and I still haven't watered them yet. The time to water them is when the leaves start coming out like this, so today, I'm going to give them their first watering since last fall. In Africa, I've heard that when the leaves start coming out on the baobab trees, it marks the beginning of the rainy season. The trees know when the rain's coming and they start to leaf out. So here in Canada, the rainy season is beginning. I'm going to water them for the first time and I'll give them a good deep water and then leave them in the greenhouse here in the sunshine
and hopefully they'll grow really well this year. So I repotted these trees last year. I didn't do much root work on them. I just put them in larger pots, surrounded them with bone size soil, and they survived the repotting really well. They grew really well over the summer. So these trees, you don't water them at all in the winter or you'll get rot on them. But once the leaves are out, you can pretty well water them like a normal tree in the summer. As long as they don't stay wet. So I don't leave them outdoors uh, in the rain or anything. I water them thoroughly and then I let the soil dry out again and then I water them thoroughly again. So it's kind of like a jade, uh, any succulent, you know, you want to deep water it, then let the soil dry out and then deep water it again. And that keeps them healthy. So we'll see what happens this summer with them. Uh, I'm growing them and what you do on the baobab trees is you grow them to the diameter of the trunk you want and then you cut the top off and that stimulates new branches and you get that baobab style, the big thick trunk with the canopy on top. There's some good videos online that show you how to take a seedling like this and transform it into a nice baobab bonsai. One thing I noticed when I repotted these is that the tap root grows straight down and when it hit the bottom of the pot it just kind of stopped. So I think a deeper pot would encourage more vigorous top growth on the trees to keep that tap root going down into the soil. But so they're all in deep pots now so they should do quite well this year. Fingers crossed, I mean anything can happen. It is a a difficult tree to grow in Canada but so far everything's going well with them. Here is a look at the trunk thickness after three years from a seed. It's quite impressive. It's amazing how these trees bulk up. It's believed that the bark on these trunks photosynthesize. Uh, if I were to scrape off just the outer layer of bark you would expose the green underneath. I do have lots more baobab seeds. They're in the seed pods that I'll be planting this summer. I want to get lots of these baobabs on the go so I have backups of backups in case something happens to these trees. And they're, the leaves on them are just totally delicious. I, uh, I hope to make a salad out of baobab leaves someday. They have a very creamy texture to them and they're just fantastic to eat. So yeah, that's my baobab trees. They're ready to grow for the summer. So the scientific name for the baobab is Adesonia digita, I believe. I hope I got that right. Uh, and the reason it's called digita is that there's five fronds on the leaves. So it's like a hand, digits. And I've never got that on the tree yet. I've only had three leaves on the one kind of compound leaf. so. I'm hoping this year I get five leaves on each kind of leaf cluster. That would be exciting. It shows the tree is maturing if that happens. The trees I have here are the giant African baobab tree. There's a lot of different species. I think there's about 17 in the family. There's the Madagascar ones. I think there's like 12 native to Madagascar. I think there's one native to Australia, the African ones. So, yeah, there's a lot of different ones. I would love to collect all the different species, but uh, maybe I just have to be satisfied with what I have. My last African tree for today is my Bert Davi ficus. So I've always kept this tree cool over the winter in the basement, and it does really well. And this year I thought, well, I'll try keeping it warm over the winter. And as you can see, it didn't grow. It kept its leaves on and normally it defoliates itself when it's cool. It just kept its leaves on and it didn't grow at all, even though it was warm and in good light. So it just goes to show, you know, the trees need a rest period and they know when to rest. So I'll just be keeping it cool from now on down in the basement. There's no point keeping it warm in the winter if it's just going to stay dormant anyway. So. Now that this tree is outside, I think it'll pick up in growth. There's new buds all over the branches. 
so it's kind of exciting. This tree has a lot of work to go on it. Uh, it's getting there. I'm trying to grow a giant canopy on top. So I'll keep working away at it and hopefully it'll have a good summer of growing and I can do lots of pruning and shaping work to it. I find I have a lot of South African plants in my bonsai collection and that's just because they do well in this climate. As long as you don't let them freeze in the winter, they seem to like the cool period in winter and the hot, humid summers here in Ontario. So that's the reason I have a lot of South African plants in my bonsai collection. So that is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.